video is a requested video. I will be sharing with you my personal experience with auction houses buying instruments in particular, you know, violins and the bows from fine instrument auction houses. I'm gonna give you some tips, you know, things to be, uh, be careful on and things to pay attention to. And um, yeah, it's gonna be mainly my personal experience. You know, I'm not a violin dealer. I'm not, you know, I I'm just professional violinist and I, do buy with my husband instruments for you know as an investment uh, for our future you know and for our children's as well so we kind of use this avenue as our you know like the way to invest the money you know some everybody's do their own things you know but this is ours and um, you know I have some knowledge my husband have some knowledge although he's not a musician but I'm just gonna basically tell you what we do, how we go about this, and um, let's just do it. We started to purchase instrument, um, instruments and bows probably eight, seven, eight years ago. Um, that's where we started the first time. And you know, we have uh, years that we buy more, we have years that we don't buy anything at all. You know, it really depends, it really depends. Um, my husband got very much into it years ago and he's a very good at research and I personally don't have a patience for research and things that for example I was looking for in the instrument he was completely not interested at so think about this if you are buying as a musician for yourself you will be buying a little bit differently than if you're buying for the investment so I'm gonna give you um, you know some tips obviously but then I'm gonna split because some things are just not you know going you know in the same way so there are certain things that you're gonna pay attention to as you buy purely for investment there are certain things that you're gonna pay attention to when you buy just for yourself or as a musician for a musician all right so let's start with where to buy let's say if you're ready to buy first of all where to buy those instruments um, and the bells there is many 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 auctions around the world okay in my opinion one of the best and the most known is Teresia auction Teresia auction is probably the most reliable at the same time they just grew expanded tremendously and um, they are having Teresia in London so that's like a European branch and then obviously Teresia New York um, others auctions that we purchased from and I have some notes in here is the Bromptoms that's another pretty big auction Inglis and Heyday I'm pretty sure those are located in England as well Vichy that's the one that it's located in France and we did purchase one of the French uh, bows and I recently did the video about the French bows so you might go ahead and I'll link it up there um, go check it out and there's many 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 others you know Skinner's there's Amati we don't we didn't purchase from all of them obviously but you know there is way more it's just I think like Teresia Brompton's Inglis Heyday you know Vichy those are the ones that in my opinion are a little bit more reliable and trustworthy so the next thing that it's super important is the fact that you need to have a budget in the past everything what we purchased you just have to have money ready on your account so stick to your budget um but keep in mind also that sometime uh you know when you buy from the auctions many 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 times you can buy the particular instrument that you're looking for under the retail value so that's why i feel like buying from auction is kind of a good avenue because Yes, you can overpay, that's why you have to do your homework, but many times you can actually buy it cheaper than you would buy from the dealer. So, when I mentioned do your homework, you need to make sure what are you looking for. So what maker you want to you know, purchase uh, the instrument by what maker. You want to make sure, you have to do your homework knowing what is the average price of that particular instrument you know how much you can get or how much you can buy it in europe how much you can uh, get this instrument for in america you know you just have to do your homework what is the average price um the next thing uh you have to know 
about the value of the instrument meaning that even if the maker is for example um i don't know let's say gagliano and the instrument is completely beat up you're not gonna get much money for that instrument you'll still get something but if there's a lot of cracks and especially that you want to stay away is a sound post crack that brings the value of the instrument down so you need to do a lot of homework knowing of you know the state of the you know instrument and how much this particular instrument in this condition will go for this way you know you're not gonna overpay it and um and you're gonna be good so you need to know exactly what you want now if you are an invest investor let's say and i'm going towards the investing avenue and you have no idea you don't want to do your homework you just don't want to bother with this there are people that you can hire who will do this for you who are experts in that particular subject and you can send them i know one person in new york city for example uh, he lives in new york city metro area and uh, you obviously pay that person and he can go to let's say Teresio and select two or three instruments and they will say this is the instrument that's just gonna give you a good uh, it is gonna be a good investment go for it because as an investor you don't necessarily how should I put it not to offend anybody not to offend any musician as an investor they don't necessarily care much about the sound of the instrument as much as the maker who is who made the instrument and the condition the condition of the instrument is super 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 important because you investing and you want to get your money back and plus more eventually so you know when you are an investor that that's what they are paying attention for they don't really necessarily thinking like mm, this violin has a warmer sound this violin has a little bit darker sound you know they don't really care about they are thinking about the future and how much money they can actually make on that instrument buying as a musician on the other hand we are buying more for ourselves and this was see this this is where the problem started because my husband was going towards this investing kind of avenue and i was going towards like no i want to know how the instrument sounds you know because i'm playing on them i want to enjoy them you know and all that stuff so we had to compromise <laughs> so ultimately uh my husband kind of win but it was a win-win for both of us because um i'm talking about the biggest investment for us which was the gragnani violin uh this violin has no cracks has nothing it's from 17 um 75 again i'll link that uh video that i did recently about my two favorite violins up there so you can go check it out and this violin is an ideal condition i mean imagine 1775 and we are in 2020 it's just mind-blowing so it was very important for my husband that it's just gonna you know be in a great condition and to me it was obviously important the sound right not as much as the condition but we both won because we have everything what we wanted so if you are a musician let's say and if you are buying purely for yourself the best advice i can give you go and listen to the instrument and check the instrument out see how it feels see how it sounds because i know they put the sound samples and you can hear violinists playing playing and it's just different when you're actually playing it yourself okay so um if you can personally go and check it out that's the best advice i can give you but if you cannot do it then you have to do your homework like i mentioned earlier what is the maker and then you know obviously you have your budget what is the maker what's the best investment you can make for this money um what is the average price that those violins goes for or the bows you know whichever you investing you know whatever you're buying um then you have to check that condition condition is just so important because you have to know exactly sometimes some violins will not be fully uh made by the same maker you know sometimes in in, in the past there were um people were cutting the scrolls off and putting some kind of different scrolls and they will say like oh yeah that violin is made by this and this but only the scroll is original you know the rest of the instrument is not so you need to do your homework and if you email let's say the Teresio 
um, or the Brothos, I mean, any auction house that you're interested in that particular instrument, you have to email them and they will send you a detailed report with like a blueprint of your instrument that you're looking at and all the little details, all the cracks there in it. So this is the best way to go around this, you know, and then obviously if they do have a sound sample, listen to it. Some instruments, some bows, when you purchase, are gonna come with the certificate. Sometimes, you know, sellers um, try to get, try to do their best to get a certificate because um, usually when you have certificate, let's say buying from dealer, it's like, it's like a bonus, you know? But you need to be careful because not all the certificates are equal. I'm gonna show you an example. I just have to cover the <laughs> sensitive information, but I'm gonna show you the, inf um, I'm gonna show you an example of the certificate. This is from my Testora violin. So you have a full picture of the front and of the back of the instrument. And then um, this is how it looks up front in here. I'm just covering the sensitive information. So the entire description of the instrument will be here and all the signature. And you know, obviously this is the logo. And what I said earlier, the and keep in mind that all the certificates are not equal. Depend who is also the person who is giving you the certificate, who is saying that, hey, I am an expert and I know exactly what it is. So you need to be very careful. So this particular one is from the Ruining, Ruining, I'm probably mispronouncing it, and Sons. This is a very good um, person to ask certificate for, to ask for the certificate. Uh, keep also in mind those things cost a lot of money sometimes it can be even like five grand or more <laughs> you know a couple of thousand dollars expect to pay for the certificate um, so you have to be very careful um, another one that I'm gonna show you um, this is from the packet bow that we've purchased um, this is this certificate so again you see the bow in here and then this is all in French <laughs> all this information is in here this is no there's no personal information on this one um, but this one is for example issued by Mr. Rafin Mr. Rafin is an expert when it comes to the French bows when you show the certificate or if you let's say if I want to sell this bow at Teresio and I bring the, this certificate no one is going to even question the authenticity of this bow that's how important this person is. So again, you can have a certificate from, I don't know, Mr. Jones, who has a dealership or he's a, a violin maker and it's just gonna mean nothing, okay? And then you have certificate from Mr. Rafin that's gonna mean that this bow is actually the bow, even though this particular bow, the Pacat bow, is not stamped. Because think about it, in the past, they didn't always stamp the bow. Like the makers did not always put their own label inside the violin that they made. So the next thing I wanna mention is the online library, online archives. This is something that is super helpful when it comes to educating yourself before you make any purchase, before you invest any large amount of money. So for example, the first one, that I'm looking here at on my iPad. This The first one is from Teresio. And this is basically the world's largest reference resource library for buyers. It's called the Cosio Archive. So if you click, if you click on it, um, you have all those little tabs, you know, it's gonna tell you about the Cosio, uh, browse the archives, obviously something that you would like to know. And then, you know, the price history, there is even, um, a tab that is just gonna show you what instruments are stolen you know and it's gonna tell you which ones are recovered which ones are still you know kind of stolen this way if someone let's sing let's say brings a stolen Stradivarius to some violin maker and if they are wise you know they can go and check if this instrument really belongs to that person or is it something fishy. Um, you do have to pay for this. If you're not a frequent buyer from the Teresio, you do have to pay a subscription. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much it is. I think it was about $100 a year. 
but I might be wrong because I always have it for free. So, uh, but yeah, this is something that is super helpful as, you know, kind of your reference. And then another one that is actually free of charge <laughs> is Bromptons. So if you go on the Bromptons website, um, you can see there's a tab reference library. And again, you can just go by the name, by the maker, you know, um, and you can click and see the prices, what this particular instrument will sell that. And it just gives you an idea of, of how much really those instrument goes for at this is only on the auction level this is not it's not going to show you any dealers um you know sales and all that stuff this is only purely for auctions so again you're going to have all the photos you know of the instruments some articles uh bios videos how to guide and you know all that stuff so basically the bromptoms is free or just all you have to do is just register and uh Teresio, you have to pay a fee so if you ever seen or went on the you know websites of those um, auction houses, you probably notice a lot of different description when it comes to the instruments. So for example, you could see something that uh, the instrument A is attributed to or is ascribed to or it's probably by or it is by, or is a workshop of, or there is a many, many different description that I think each single buyer should know and have to reference to, you know, basically understand how it works. So for example, I'm just gonna, um, again, I'm looking here on my iPad, but I think this is very helpful. So for example, when you have an instrument and it says the Antonio Stradivarius, you know, it's, and it says by, Antonio Stradivari, that instrument by, uh, they believe that this is the actual Strat violin. Okay, so when it says by, means all the experts on this particular auction house, and they do have a lot of very knowledgeable experts, you know, I mean, think about it, people pay millions of dollars sometimes, right? So um, if they say that this is by this and this and this maker, there's no question about it, that's guarantee. When it says that instrument is attributed to, that means that in the past, someone stated that or mentioned that, that this particular violin was made by the Stradivar Stradivarius, but this day, those experts don't necessarily agree with this opinion. When it says that the particular instrument is ascribed to, let's say Stradivarius again, that means that this instrument most likely came with some kind of a certificate that I showed you earlier. But those experts these days who are looking at this instrument, they don't agree with this certificate. They don't think it's legit and it might be, but they don't think it is. When it says the instrument is probably or possibly made by certain maker, that means that opinion is basically divided. When it says that particular instrument is under the direction of, let's say, Antonio Stradivari, it means that it was executed, uh, it was made by someone else most of the thing, but it was under strict supervision of Antonio Stradivari in this case, or, you know, whatever maker it is. So, you know, those are like very, very tiny details. Workshop let's say, of Strand Antonio Stradivari. This particular instrument was executed in the style of Antonio Stradivari, but most probably under his supervision again, or with his kind of, you know, maybe slightly involved, involvement in that, you know, process of making that instrument. Another term, circle of, again, the particular maker, Antonio Stradivari, a work believed to be someone associated with the maker. So again, read the description. Associated with the maker, working under his direct or indirect influence. School of, again, the particular maker, is usually a work of the follower, someone who, um, someone who maybe lived in the same region of you know when that particular maker and he kind of you know study you know from person to person 
but it most likely has nothing to do uh, directly with that maker and then the last one is labeled or stamped you know uh, by there's so many instruments that are stamped on Tony Stradivarius and obviously they're not. So what it means that an instrument is not necessarily the work of the maker stated, but labeled or branded as such. Okay guys, so I'm gonna finish here because this video is already super, super long, but I hope it is helpful, especially for those who are looking, you know, to make an investment. And purchasing instrument it is a little bit nerve-wracking it can be a little bit uh, you know um, risky obviously you're always taking risks that's why you see a lot of um, dealers buying in instruments you know and I, I didn't mention it but there are also auctions of quite damaged instruments which again lots of violin makers will buy you know dealers and they are fixing it and then obviously selling it for the premium so um you know there is i believe there is always a little bit of everybody can find something for themselves that's at you know any kind of ranch although most of those auction houses they you know they 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 um they sell quite expensive instruments you know um so if you're looking to buy a thousand or two thousand dollar violin that's not gonna even be a you know fully made handmade instrument so i'm talking about the instruments that are in thousands of dollars you know and bows and all of that so and it goes up to the millions so yeah all right guys thank you so much for watching if you're new to my channel please don't forget to subscribe if you like this video if it was helpful give me a thumbs up <laughs> and um let me know if you have any questions please leave your comments down below I'll really appreciate and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.